There are over 86 million people in China today living with some form of disabilities. What is China's government going to do about it? Everyone, I want to welcome you to a special episode of Real Talk China, where I'm welcoming in an expert on the ground in China to give us some insights into one of the biggest social problems facing the country of China today. In today's episode, you're going to learn about Toby, a Swedish company who is using its patented eye tracking software to help millions of Chinese people live better lives. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 8 of Real Talk China. All right, everybody, I'd like to welcome into the studio and today's show on Real Talk China is Yane. He is a Finnish uh, expat living in Suzhou. Yane, how are you today? Hey, good to be here. I'm doing very good. Thanks okay. for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm really excited to tell your story today and, you know, the projects that you're working on, your company, Toby, some of the amazing things they're doing and some of the lives that are being impacted in China. As I said, this is a story that really needs to be told and I'm so happy to have you here. So, you know, as we get going, let's let's establish a little bit of a base here. Tell us a little bit about how your China story began. So, yeah, I'm from Finland. Finland is a small country of five and a half million people. Ever since I was a small kid, I knew that I want to travel the world. The first opportunity that I was to work with China was in 2003. And I was mm -hmm. supposed to move to China, but the project got canceled because the SARS pandemic okay, started. Right. Yeah. And then I kept on working with China on engineering teams. We had engineering team in China who was doing mobile test, mobile phone testing for Nokia projects mostly. Okay. Yeah. And then in 2008, uh, China Mobile wanted to do a Chinese 3G variant of a very like successful phone N95 in Nokia. Okay. So there was a group of Finnish people and a group of French people and a group of South Korean people who moved to Beijing to build a phone project. Wow, and nice. That's that's 13 years ago now, 14 years ago now. And, Amazing. Uh, and me and one French modem specialist are the last two men standing still from that original gang. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, Yanni, you know, I, I moved to China in 2007. I was yeah. living in Shanghai and I remember you know, back in 2007, you know, Nokia was just, you know, dominant in China. And I remember walking on Nanjing Silu, the famous walking street in Shanghai and seeing the flagship uh, Nokia store there. And, you know, and my colleagues and I on our days off, we would go and check out all the new phones. You know, it was, it was really the uh, cool place to be in, in China. Nokia, Nokia ringtone was very big in China. It was heard everywhere. And uh, in it the was. rural areas, a lot of people used the Nokia phones. So you, so out of your original friends that came, you, you and one other are the last men standing still in China today. So you've been in China yeah. for, you know, well over 12 years now. And I know that you have your permanent residence card, which I think is amazing because this, it's probably one of the hardest permanent resident cards to obtain you know for a foreigner so what does that mean to you you know that you're a permanent resident of the country of China yeah well I mean of course I think it is quite difficult card to get uh, I've heard some statistics that 25,000 people have it and maybe they're a little bit old you might fact check and find a more recent number somewhere yeah. China started to give these in 2004 and uh, mm -hmm. I think the first person who ever had a permanent resident card that I personally met was in 2016. So okay. it, there is not many of us here. So of course, like when you are established in China and you have been here a long time and you want to kind of have, especially when the pandemic started and visas and traveling was difficult, yeah, the permanent absolutely. residency card really helps out on that. It's a great honor, of course, to have it. It's kind of a acknowledgement from the government that I have done my part of being a good society member and uh, i really appreciate the fact that i get to enjoy more benefits when it comes i'm kind of on the same level as a chinese person when it comes to yeah. getting a more kids getting credit cards other things which have historically been a bit difficult for a foreigner and it then, is it is absolutely yeah you're not tied to the visa and the visa processes in the same way as you are when you are just working with the under a work visa in china it is something that government is opening up and, and being more accepting yeah, as a check of China opening up. Absolutely. And that's something we see, I think, in China is you can just see this continuous progression over the years, you know, becoming 
you know, a little bit more international standards, you know, you know, and, and, and they might move a little bit slower than other countries, but, you know, they are moving forward in this initiative, which is, which is great to see. Um, in, in other areas, they're moving much faster than other that's, countries. Yeah, so. that's true. Absolutely. And well, well said. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, let's talk a little bit about Toby, Toby Electronics. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you are, you know, tell us a little bit about your role and, you know, what you do there. All right. So I'm I'm the general manager of the Toby subsidiaries here in China. Our company is doing eye tracking. So okay. eye tracking is is something with where we put near infrared cameras into the device and will allow the device to know where you are paying attention to and where you are looking at. It's a wonderful technology which has been developing over the years and you can use it for human behavioral research. You can use it for computer interaction. You can use it for immersion when you're playing games. You can use it in a virtual reality. You can use it in automotive to safety, drowsiness detection. There's so many applications that I'm Amazing. sure that other companies will figure out also as they collaborate with us. And, and then you can use it as a computer interaction. So you can use it as a communication devices. I think that's that's where I want to take this conversation because you know when I heard more about your company and your story, one of the amazing things that I found out was you know how dedicated Toby is to really improving the lives of disabled people in the country of China. And I want you to tell everybody a little bit about you know some of the projects you're working on, the people that you've met, and a little bit more about Toby's you know dedication you know to that venture and helping people with disabilities in China. Mm. So, so Toby has a business division called Toby Dynavox, mm -hmm. and Toby Dynavox is on a mission of helping people communicate. So we say it's power to be you. It's to, to do something that you used to be able to do, but then you got a disability or an injury, or you never were able, you, people didn't think that you are able to do something because of you were born with a disability. So we're trying to give you tools. Yeah. Something still to this day, the most mind blown thing I've ever seen is this eye tracking software from a company called Toby. It would focus in on my eyes, wherever my eyes would look on the screen, that would be a mouse. It's just amazing, I could do. Yeah, so we do eye tracking devices, we do communication devices to help individuals with disabilities to express themselves, to interact with the world around themselves. So controlling environment by having an eye tracking device where you can actually change the TV channel, you can close the curtains, open the windows, interact with your surroundings, as well as to express yourself, so communicate. You can have a com computer generate speech on your behalf when you are not able to yeah. this is like a main part and it's a, it is a large part of toby as as a company it's uh, almost half of our business is to create communication devices for people wow so specifically for people with disabilities yeah so we yeah. are selling in 65 different countries with wow. our solutions incredible incredible now, um, tell us a little bit, um, I think you have a really interesting story that I want everybody to know and that we've talked about before. And, you know, tell us about this lady named Tiffany, you know, and her whole story. Sure. Tiffany is one of our users. Her English name is Tiffany. So she's living in Beijing. I met her first, it was 2017. There was a conference in Beijing about okay. the communication tools. And Tiffany was one of the person who came there using our device, our iSeries, to give a speech in Chinese language for the, the people in there. Yeah. And uh, one of the group that kind of spot her there was ISAC, which is International Society of AAC. And they were having a much bigger event in Australia in a surface paradise in 2018. Okay. So they invited Tiffany also to Australia to go and give a speech in there. Amazing. And then I had the pleasure to co-travel with Tiffany into the surface paradise. And we went, we went together with her caregiver herself and me and uh, my marketing person in China. So we traveled to Australia to help facilitate her keynote speak in Australia. Hi, nice meeting you all here in Australia. My name is Tiffany and I'm from an old town in Beijing. China. As you can tell from my appearance, 
I was born different because of my physical conditions. But I have never lost faith in life. If God wants me to be different, guess what? I will live life the way it is. I am still me, a joyful Pisces girl. Tiffany is born with cerebral palsy and okay. uh, she's now about 30 years old. You can imagine like 30 years ago when she was born. So her family found out that she's not developing as you would expect. And they mm -hmm. ran through different doctors. And back in that time, I think uh, China was much less developed than it is today. So sure. there was in her story when she was saying it, uh, there was a doctor who had kind of recommended the parents that you just give her up for adoption and you make a new one because of the one child policy. It's a, it's a tough story to hear and, and listen. And I think that like the mother's love of making sure that she received education, she received the support that she needed. So Amazing. today she's actually doing much better. She is working on a marketing. So, you know, WeChat, of course. So in, of course, yeah. she's, she's very active in WeChat promoting events and, and, uh, things that like there's a lot of promotions that she's doing as a marketing person today which that's is incredible really that's really amazing that, that's such a good story and, and i think that's something that you know um one of the stats that i always hear and that i've tracked and you know we've all heard is this poverty alleviation you know that has has mm -hmm. transformed over the last 30 years and we know that china's government has done a great job in that and i think if we take go back 30 years in time china was just starting to really become developed and, you know, culturally, you know, I think, you know, for many years, you know, there was only one child allowed in China. Um, I mean, even, you know, even boys would have been preferred over girls. Certainly a girl with also a disability would have been very low priority, maybe for many Chinese at, at one point in time. And it's amazing, though, like you said, the mother's love, you know, to, to see that. And, and it's amazing to see, I think, the transition of China you know, and to now, you know, they're they're embracing, you know, all these different technologies, they're reinvesting into society. And, you know, and this is a great story of Tiffany that I think more people really needed to hear. And it's so interesting to have, you know, Toby, you know, a, a, you know, right at the forefront, right there in China. And like you said, you know, 50% of what you guys are doing is is really helping people with disabilities, selling to 65 countries around the world, you know, and really helping, you know, these people. This is fantastic work. Mm, well, yeah, I mean, we, it's a very big part of our pride of being a Tobian is that we are actually creating solutions and modern technology that helps people no, um, change, changing the world. Absolutely. And that's that that's uh, that makes you probably really motivated to go to work. Right. Every day, you know, you're 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 literally making people's lives better. That's a that's a lot of job satisfaction. I know you made a trip over to uh, Tin Huangdao which is a developing city about 300 kilometers east of Beijing. And mm -hmm. I know that you, you gave a big speech there. You were working with the local government. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so, you know, you've been in China for a long time. So Chinese government is kind of guiding different provinces. They're guiding the cities to kind of establish their presence on certain industries. And Tsinghuandao is one of those cities who is taking into their umbrella to create uh, rehabilitation technology and services as well as medical technology and device industry hub. They are developing into creating an industry parks which allows uh, companies to come and create medical devices and they are also helping to give market access. Yeah, last year they had a big forum for industries to come and speak. So I was one of the keynote speakers talking nice. about the communication devices and the importance of those. Then after that, there was a panel where Chinese government wanted to kind of share their plans, what they're doing in Tsinghua Dao, but also to listen what are the concerns and practicalities that are slowing down companies and industry. As a Western company, for example, one of the bigger challenges of always is how do you get Chinese FDA approvals? How do you right, make right. sure that your products comply with the local regulations? And it is a quite bureaucratic process, of course. So then Absolutely. having government assist companies and kind of co working and collaborating together becomes very critical if you want to actually be present in the market. Absolutely. And, and I would say that, you know, Tsinghuan government, they have been very active. We have 
interacted with them for a couple of years. They have visited our headquarters in Sweden. They visited Germany. They've kind of been looking into how countries are doing it. So government is always very receptive of listening and understanding how other places are doing. And then they figure out what works for China and then they execute on it. And I think that's something that not many people understand is, you know, that China's government, I think they're very open to working with foreign companies and they're really willing to learn. And I think you said it best is, you know, they're seeing, you know, what's what's happening in other countries? What's the technology? What's happening? And then how can we implement this in our society into the Chinese society? Of course, it won't be a copy paste. It can't be, you know, what's going to work well in Finland is not going to just be exactly the same in China. But certainly yeah. that's some technology, you know, we can certainly use some of the technology and some of the techniques. Wow. And like you said, they're really turning this, uh, the city, uh, Tin Huangdao, into, yeah. you know, a re rehabilitation center and really investing in that. So I actually expect like five years in the future, Tin Huangdao mm -hmm. will have rehabilitation hospitals and services and clinics, and then they will have hotels so that, let's say an elderly person gets a stroke and needs to get rehabilitation service. They can go there, they can find and test all the equipment, figure out what works for them. And at the same time, they can combine for a little holiday, maybe for the family members, because Tsinghua nice. is a beautiful beach city. The Great Wall goes into the ocean. So that's if you're right. on the beach there, you can. It, it's an enjoyable place. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's, of course, I think China also investing in the fact that they know that a rising aging population is you know, one of the biggest you know, things that are, that will be affecting China in the future. That is, you know, one of the biggest concerns, I think, for the country, knowing that they have a population that is certainly aging very fast. So, you know, let's start investing in these facilities and the technology to help people. Yeah, I think this is great. Other similar area is Hainan. So, you know, Hainan is developing now into being a free trade zone and they are also becoming a medical device industry center in the near future. So, it becomes that China has multiple locations which are picking up certain industries and then they're working on it. Yeah, fantastic. So. Yane, you talked a little bit about uh, the United States, obviously. The United States, you know, actually mm. has a great, we have a great medical system, um, mm. you know, and we have a lot of great technologies there. You know, you, you had mentioned that you feel the United States is probably something like 15 years ahead of China, um, but you mm. don't think that it's going to take China 15 years mm. to catch up. So tell us a little bit more about your insights, since you really do have a lot of insights into this specific industry. So first of all, like, you know, USA has a great healthcare system, but it's when you have a good medical insurance, you are covered and you then you get world class help. That's great. Quite surprisingly, maybe for people who are not living in China, China is somewhat similar on this, is that China has a lot of copay healthcare systems. It is not socialized medicine like like i'm coming from finland and we have a high social spending china is actually closer to usa than than scandinavia or nordic countries in right. this aspect china always moves amazingly fast when i came to beijing i remember i was living on a east and third ring road and then i take a car to the nokia factory which was on a yijuang which is a southeast fifth ring road right. and there was grasslands and pastures and there was cows walking on a street and then if you go today, it's all urban, very modern right. area. You cannot right. even recognize it anymore. So China is developing very fast. And when it comes to healthcare services, um, even USA, things have moved relatively recently. So Barack Obama signed Steve Gleason Act, which gives insurance coverage for people with communication dis disabilities in USA in 2015, if I remember right. Okay, so, so this is fairly it, recent and even in America, you know, that's yeah, amazing. it's relatively recent in USA. And then you have Medicare, Medicaid, of course. And, and if you look at China and Chinese social system, it's basically three pillars. There's mm -hmm. a social assistance, which is pretty much an income transfer to the poorest people of the country who don't okay. have in income. And then disabled people who are not employed are large, often in this group of people as well. Right. Then you have social security system, which is a mixture of government and a company given insurances and pension plans. But then private health insurances are coming pretty quickly into the mix in China. And you can see a lot of 
healthcare insurance companies providing additional benefits and packages and services. Then you have welfare services. So you talked about the poverty alleviation. So Mm -hmm. government is doing here is also to help for, let's say, a disabled person living in a countryside in a house which is not safe. So they need to help kind of remodel and rebuild those houses to be more accessible. And a lot of these kind of activities are happening all the time. So just in April, the CDPF, China Disabled People Federation, the government branch organization, which has 180,000 workers. And China has about 86 million people who have disability. It's a large group of people who definitely need help. And of course, you want to be able to employ some of them back into the workforce. So you want to help them rehabilitate. You want to give early intervention in terms of education to make sure that people with disabilities are learning literacy. So there's a lot of activities that government is doing on this. So I, I'm very bullish when it comes to China, putting their nice. heart and mind into solving the problems of the uh, future. And Absolutely. this is one of the strongest areas of Chinese government is that they are always looking into pretty far in the future. They are not working in the same kind of a democratic cycle of uh, elections every four years. So they are trying to solve difficult problems of the future. Absolutely. Uh, aging population, um, these kind of issues. I'm sure there's a lot of people putting them heart and mind in there. I do think that's China's, one of its greatest strength is, you know, having a political system that very much looks at things from a very long horizon. You know, what what is the country going to be like 20 years from now? Let's start mm-hmm. making this plan. I think, as, as you know, China has just entered into its 14th consecutive five-year plan um, the five-year plan mm-hmm. is really a staple of the government in China. Um, you know, they've yeah. had one in place since the founding of the People's Republic of China. And it's mm-hmm. just amazing, you know, when you look at the plans that they set out, it, I mean, it's just so structured, so organized. And, you know, you just have a very clear, you know, goal. I mean, I think that's in, in business and in life, you know, you need to have a, a clear goal set ahead of you. And how are we going to get there? You know, what's the goal? How are we going to do that? And like you said, I, I remain very bullish as well on China, you know, in their aspirations, um, you know, with a lot of things. I mean, we look at the infrastructure changes. I mean, you talked about Beijing and, you know, how the Fifth Ring Road, there was nothing but cows and pasture. Now it's all developed. A uh, very similar mm-hmm. story for me in Shanghai, you know, when I first went there and then when I was last there uh, in 2019 mm-hmm. for business trip. Amazing how much these cities have changed, the infrastructure for the people, the quality of life. Now we're, we're, ta- we're hearing about these rehabilitation centers Last year, roughly two two and a half million people received assistive device. So basically, when when I speak of and what I was saying in Tsinghua Dao is that there's 50 million people in the world who needs assistive devices to communicate. Roughly three million of them live in countries where there's a robust funding, like right. the Nordic system or America, and Australia is great examples of these. Correct. And then China has 12 million people with communication disabilities. So there's still a lot of changes that needs to happen for these people to get access to Absolutely. what is Absolutely. really needed. And, and, you know, 75% of people with disabilities in China tend to live in a countryside. So Correct. Correct. Yeah, it's yeah. also, as a company, it's also difficult to access them. So Correct. we need to also build networks and kind of help find find an effective ways to help these people. Absolutely. Yeah, the work is still there's still a lot of work to be done, you know, but I think China is investing in and, you know, working with great companies like yourself, you know, Vatobi and, and a great manager like yourself that is, uh, you know, going to continue to improve this. And I think, as we say, you know, I, I think both of us feel very bullish about the future that China is heading down the right path and, you know, certainly, you know, committing to helping more people with disabilities inside the country. That's on. Mm, yeah. And this has been a fantastic chat. I want to have I have one final question for you. I like to ask most of my guests here on the show. You know, what is one thing that you would like the world to know about China? Okay. So I think that it's always funny, like people are like business people and companies, they they are wanting to have their China strategy. And yeah. to me, being here for 13 years now, it's almost like having a Europe strategy. So Mm -hmm. I would actually want people to think that there's a vast difference of what happens in Beijing versus what happens in Shanghai. um, And it's not applicable with what can be done in Shenzhen. So you try to kind of have a thinking about that 
China is a very complicated place where you have to adapt into multiple market conditions if you're doing business. There's this old saying that if you're selling anything else than a rice, you don't have 1.5 billion customers in your reach. And I think it's very true. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's a, that's a good insight because uh, unfortunately for many of those out on the outside looking at China, we look at China just as one country. I almost, I, my, my thing that I always like to say is I always say China is a continent as opposed to a country. It's more similar to a continent because you have so many different experiences and, and regional languages, so over 300 regional languages in China. Uh, and like you said, you know, Beijing is so different from uh, Chongqing and Shanghai and Hainan Island. I mean, very different cultural experiences as you travel. So it's more similar. I mean, it is one united country, but it is more similar to a continent. And like Europe, how diverse it is, right? You can't come up with a European strategy. You need to make sure you have a specific strategy for each country in, in Europe. Yeah, and I would, you know, it, it's it, Chinese competition is pretty fierce. So you should also kind of always evaluate, like, where can you do business? Well, what works for you? And then you try to double down on your strengths there and kind of make that part work and then change change how you operate in here Fantastic. so this is a great place to do business this is where future is happening and i'm really happy to be part of that oh, that's that's fantastic that's fantastic well, i appreciate you bringing in the business side because that's something that i really like to focus on in my channel you know this channel is dedicated to you know building relationships building bridges and like you said you're living in the future right now yeah i mean, I mean you you're there on the ground there's amazing projects that are being launched in China, and I do believe that China has a big role in the future of our world society. So I think it's really important to hear amazing stories like this. Thank you so much for your time today, and thank you for joining here. Uh, you. you know, here on Real Talk China. It's been my pleasure to follow up your channel growing up. Everyone, I want to thank you for watching today's episode of Real Talk China. I hope you enjoyed these insights and also learning more about how companies like Toby are partnering with China's government to help improve the lives of millions of Chinese across the nation. Now, June 21st is ALS Awareness Day, and I've included some additional resources from our friends at Toby down in the description below. I've also included a recent article from CNN that highlights the story of Sarah Ezekiel, a longtime user of the Toby Dynabox who uses the technology to create paintings using only her eyes. Once again, thank you for watching today's episode. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications, and I look forward to seeing all of you in a future video.